everyone. A sheep found a hole in the fence and he crept through it. He wandered far and got lost. Then he realised that he was being chased by a wolf. He ran and ran and ran, but the wolf kept chasing him until the shepherd came, rescued him, carried him lovingly back to the fold. In spite of everyone's urgings, however, the shepherd refused to nail up the hole in the fence. Now, repentance is not putting myself in a straitjacket. It's not denying myself freedom where I stick to external rules, but without a corresponding change of heart. Repentance is when I freely choose to do the right thing, even though I could have done otherwise. When the people came to see John, they first confessed their sins before they were baptised. Do we have a priest confessor or even a soul friend to whom we can bear our soul? Or do we think a generic confession of sins is enough? If we refuse to single out certain dominant sins in our lives, and we've all got them, we could end up being sorry for everything, but in reality sorry for nothing. Psychiatrists tell us that a patient's presenting problem is often not the real problem with them. There's usually a deeper cause to a person's disordered state of mind, which is often kept hidden. If we hide certain things from our GP, for instance, then he is limited in the help he can give us. The same applies to the state of our souls. Like Adam and Eve, we can even try and hide from God just like they did. And then there are people who only see sin in the context of unjust structures or damage to the environment or social inequalities. Frightfully important, maybe, as these issues are, especially in the present context, they can sometimes be a convenient diversion or a smokescreen for not dealing with recurring sins in our own personal lives. If each of us is right with God in our own souls, then we can't but be challenged by global issues as well and social inequalities. Others see the confession of personal sins to a priest as lumbering people with harmful guilt complexes. Yes, some people do have guilt hang-ups, but repenting of our sins is not one of them. In fact, that is a very healthy thing to do. People sometimes blame the church for burdening people with guilt. And if they do that, they, I think they resemble the Pharisees in today's gospel who sneered at those simple folk who confessed their sins to John while they, that's the Sadducees and Pharisees, only went through the motions of repentance but inwardly remained as hard-hearted as ever. John the Baptist called them a brood of vipers. They remind me, a few years ago, I remember seeing that beautiful movie, The Song of Bernadette, and these Pharisees remind me of the atheistic Dr. Tzu, where he sneers at the poor, bedraggled multitude of people trudging their way in 1858 to the rubbish dump at Massabiel, where Our Lady appeared. And these people were clutching at their rosary beads, desperately hoping for a cure of one kind or another, or an answer to their prayers. Those humble folk who sought out John in the wilderness and the multitudes who descended upon Lourdes, especially in the early days, and even today, would have a lot in common. But the proud spirit of Dr. Tzu lives on in many. Advent is the time to lay the axe to the root of the tree, which fails to produce the good fruit of repentance, and replace it with a tree which is laden with the fruits of genuine transformation, conversion of heart. I don't think there's no better way to prepare for Christmas. Now thank you all very much for listening and God bless you all. Oh.